Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this plate compactor, which I bought a few weeks back. It's another one of those battles of hire versus buy. So stick around and I'll let you know the verdict. Hi folks, just a quick one today to talk about a new toy, tool, toy, same thing. And you'll know that over the years I've hired many plate compactors for various projects, whether that's paths or patios or driveway prep. And usually, or sometimes, hiring can make sense. But also, if you get stuck in a situation where you can't hire, or you know you're going to be using it over many, many weeks, then sometimes it makes sense to buy something for yourself. So here's a little look at this shiny creature, and we'll see how it gets on with the task I've got for it. So jumping back to about two weeks after the whole lockdown started, uh, I couldn't get hold of any hire kit, and this I stumbled across it online, and it, believe it or not, it was sold by Aldi. So yes, it's another supermarket special, but it's a well-known brand, and it's well-known for various tools and woodworking tools. So I thought I'd take a plunge. The reviews seemed okay. It came uh, via AO.com, bizarrely, so maybe they've got some sort of deal going on with the delivery. It turned up upside down, so I did need to check it over after delivery, but it was fine. And it was just a case of bolting together. Instructions fairly straightforward as well. There are a few little niggles with it, but I will cover some of those later in the video. The throttle lever itself uh, secures by a clamp system not very well. Uh, so I need to look at a better way of getting that fixed on there. It just seems to twist and, and not tighten up that uh, efficiently. Uh, the cable then just needs to be cable tied on. The, the handle itself is a slightly different design from what I've been used to on the Honda machines from the hire company. It articulates over which while is good for sticking in the boot of a car, using it takes a little bit getting used to. There's also the addition of some transport wheels on it. That I thought was just a bit of a gimmick and an unnecessary add-on. But I tell you what, they've got a purpose and they really, uh, really do help. If you've ever had to lug one of these things around, whether it's uh, across a driveway or across a lawn, they're, they're not easy to move around. So these wheels that drop down and swing under the plate, they do have a, a decent reason for being there. The whole mechanism isn't uh, as great as it could be. They just need to uh, be secured a bit better when you're in use, but I'll touch on that later in the video too. Finally, that bar at the front secures the rubber mat if you're using it for block paving. So I left that bar on because it's the sort of thing that would be bound to get lost in the middle of the workshop floor. But that was it. So now it's time to get it ready and get it trialled ready for our big project this week. Now, first job was to get the oil topped up. The machine comes empty, obviously, so you do need to put oil in. It's 600 mil, I think it said that it needed. Uh, to do that, you need a funnel, and if you can't find a funnel, then you probably find the nearest thing to a funnel, which is a children's toy. And <laughs> once I'd given that a clean off after being in the sandpit, I topped it up. I probably overfilled it by 50 mil, uh, so it tipped out a little bit as I lay it back down. So. A good clean up there and then we were ready for fuel. Alright, let's see. Choke on. Fuel is across. Is there anything more soul destroying than an engine that won't start? But hold tight because this is user error, as always. Ah, every time I hire something. Let's try again, shall we? I'm pretty sure that I would have started first time. If I'd remember to turn it on. I mean, it is a big red knob. I couldn't have missed it. 
So at this point I'm not actually ready to start using it so I just gave it a little buzz over a little bit of the waste ground before we start our groundwork and prep within the sleeper wall that we started uh, but everything worked really well. It's not quite as refined as the the Honda type that I've been hiring but really it seems to be as powerful. This handle is a little different and when you start tipping it up in order to pivot on a point then the wheels drop off the hooks there. So I kind of like the idea of the wheels but they need something, just a little cable tie or something maybe that you can unhook. Everything works well, don't forget your on switch. Right, we're jumping ahead a bit. I've carried on, I've built that wall now and I'm just going over with one pass, just over the soil. This is below all that kind of rubble and stuff which I've cleared off. Just wanted to give it one going over before I started putting the geotextile and then our type one down. Uh, and it worked fine on that. Then it's homeschool time, of course. Shifting gravel, one of those lifelong skills everyone needs to learn. And once I was out, then I'm working in 50 mil layers just to get that all compacted down. And I'll be covering this in a separate video, but I just wanted to show it in action to prove that it can whack, because that's all it really needs to do. And as long as you're doing it in layers, sensible thickness layers, and you're doing it in a methodical way, this thing really doesn't perform any different from uh, one of the bigger brands that you might hire. I'm really impressed. I think it was 280 pounds, and each time I've hired, I've probably ended up keeping it a day or two extra, if not more. I wouldn't be surprised if I spent three, four hundred pounds over the last four or five years. Um, this thing, you know, I could have used it just for this summer and thrown it on eBay at the end of the summer and probably got nearly all my money back. So it's really handy to have this. I'm probably going to be able to stash it away somewhere because the amount of projects that I dream up, I'm sure we're going to need it again. So there it is, that is a couple of weeks work with the uh, the new plate compactor. I'm really impressed. I wouldn't say that I'm missing the higher versions. Yes, they're probably gonna last a decade longer, but if you look after something and you're not hauling it in and out of vehicles and in and out of trucks all the time, if it's more for a domestic type tool, then I can't see any issue with this at all. It's pretty efficient on fuel, I've used it for a good few hours and I've only just topped it up um, it, it's pennies really if you're doing just jobs around your own house now the huge benefit the main benefit of buying a tool like this rather than hiring is that I've carried out this work over the last two or three weeks if I was doing it with a with a hire company that's either going to cost a fortune or I'm going to be either rushing to do the job or having to take it back and come back in when the next batch of gravel you know unless you can plan everything unless you've got the luxury of being given two weeks off work to tackle a project and you know you're going to have that window of time if you're doing evenings and weekends like most DIYs then it's handy to have something yourself that you can pick up use when you need it and tuck away when you don't and then perhaps just sell at the end the air filter is probably one to keep an eye on because uh, you're going to be probably using this on, on gravel, dusty gravel. And this is the first I've looked at it in two weeks. It's pretty catered with dust. Um, they'll clean up. It's gonna last you a good couple of years before you need to replace that. Just wash it out and let it dry thoroughly. As far as maintenance, it's like any other small engine tool you've got. You know, it's like a, having a lawnmower, essentially, changing the oil checking the air filter, keeping on top of stuff. I don't think this is, I wouldn't call this a budget option. By the time you look at the steel, the engineering in it, it's solid. You know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna break on you. Um, there's probably more of a polished uh, engine side of things on the more expensive models. Uh, as far as maybe the components are better, the fuel hoses and stuff, sometimes on these cheaper uh, engines can perish, but I don't think I would be at all surprise if I didn't have to do much of this at all within you know the next five years uh, the amount you're going to use it as a DIY is probably not going to need much at all I don't want to finish on the negatives but let's just go over a couple of the bits the throttle it's a little bit 
tacky uh, and it doesn't necessarily stay where you want it. Sometimes you put it up to full throttle, it'll back down about 10%. You can adjust it with this sort of screw, um, but I do want to fix that better because it still twists. The handle isn't what you're used to. Uh, if you, there's two models you can quite often hire. One is a bigger, uh, it's normally done on the width of the machine or the weight perhaps, um, but one's got a bigger handle and it will sit over the top because when you're turning you want it over the center of the machine it's much easier to pivot this one articulates which is kind of okay um, but it takes a bit of getting used to it the, the smaller ones sometimes have that bar that comes over the top which is really quite handy if you're trying to get into a corner or do a trench but i think this is probably a bit chunky for that um it's snagged a little bit on something um when it's folded down which is probably good for transport but where it's caught it just needs gaffer tape or maybe some hockey stick tape or something to repair that to make it a little bit more durable the wheels great that they spin while you're going but that's just for comic value <laughs> um apart from that yeah i've just tied it up with a bit of garden twine and when i need them they're there but if i don't i don't really notice so there anyway it certainly gets my thumbs up i will link to this where I can find it uh, in the description below. If it was still an Audi, I'd be linking to that because it was a great price and super simple delivery and everything like that. Um, if I can find it on Amazon or Screwfix or something, I will find the link. There's three or four different size engines, different powers, different models with the same manufacturer. I haven't even said the name yet because I'm not sure quite how you should say it. Shapak? Shapak, let's go with that. Um, but I will leave the links down below and you can go and see the specs for yourself. But there we go. Not one for normally reviewing tools or unboxing or anything like that. But sometimes it's worth sharing a tool like this. And especially when you are on that fence of hire or buy. Maybe this helps one way or the other. But it's another thing to store, which is always the negative. But never mind. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself. And we'll see you next time. Oh my goodness, you scared the life out of me. All right? Yeah. Come to do some work? Yeah. Well, I think you can probably start stacking the bricks now. Yeah. And it's in the shade. And it's in the shade. I was thinking maybe we take the bricks up and we'll go around the tree. I